Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this Match Day Minus One Leagues Cup 2023 press conference. Remember to silence your cell phones. Uh, for host Chicago Fire against visiting Club America, we welcome Coach Frank Columbus out of the Chicago Fire. Coach, your initial thoughts before tomorrow's match, uh, knockout round. Yeah. No, I mean, obviously, it's exciting. Uh, we're looking forward to the match. Uh, again, I think it's always exciting when uh, uh, we're able to play uh, a different opponent. I think... Uh, uh, the, the 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 players are looking forward to the match. It was excellent against also against you know uh, Webla being here. Uh, the atmosphere was great. Uh, I expect a you know a packed crowd tomorrow. I know we'll have our supporters, but I know that uh, Club America will majority of the fans will be here. But it's a, it's a great opportunity to face a really good team, and uh, uh, so the players are looking forward to it. So it'll be an exciting uh, exciting match. Fantastic booster. We'll start with questions here in the room, and then we'll go to the Zoom. We do have a number of uh, attendees online. And as a reminder, we are habilitating the interpretation function uh, from English to Spanish. So if you do, wait just one moment, you'll be able to click the interpretation on your Zoom uh, through the interpretation button. Thank you very much. We'll start right here in front. Hey, Coach. How are you doing today? Good, good. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Okay, it's been eight years since that CONCACAF Champions League final. There's a big game feel around this game tomorrow. Do you have any unfinished business with Club America? No. I mean, I don't look at it that way. I just uh, I think that was a great opportunity that uh, back then that uh, we were in the final. Uh, big moment, obviously, uh, for a club like, uh, like Montreal. And uh, we had a great showing our first game in, in Azteca and then the second half in... Uh, in Montreal, uh, uh, we, you know, got opened up a little bit, uh, uh, and uh, America had a lot of quality in that match. We did too. I was missing some key guys, but it was a great match. So, no, we're just looking forward to to uh, to play. You know, uh, a team that has a lot of history in Mexico, one of the best teams, probably one of, you know, a team that has a great following that you know that's had some great players represent the club and. I kind of feel in a short time in, 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 with our team here, uh, we've had some some great players around the world that have been able to wear this jersey. So in a short time, I think we're, uh, uh, we've are we've we've written some history of our own here. We've played America in the past. It's always exciting to play them because the atmosphere here is going to be great. Uh, I know the players are looking forward to the match, and uh, no, I just hope you know I just want a good match. As a reminder, interpretation is available on the Zoom call. Just click the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen. You'll be able to hear the simultaneous translation from English to Spanish. We'll continue here in the conference room. Let's come back here. Hey, Frank. Joe Chats on Tap Sports. I'm curious. You've had a couple of days to scout out this Club America team. Uh, what are some of your initial thoughts and uh, what your team have to will have to do to be successful on Friday? Yeah, I mean, I've watched them in, in the League's Cup play, but I've also went back and watched uh, the Liga MX games. You know, I mean, as a new coach, obviously, look, there's a team that uh, they have a lot of quality. They, they're a team that wants to keep possession of the ball in a way to kind of draw you away from and, and spread you out and then their ability to be more vertical. Uh, that's always a threat. So I think for us, it's it's, it's really important that uh, we, we, we stay patient and we're really compact and organized defensively. I think that's the key knowing that there'll be stretches where they have a lot of the ball because they try to pull you out of certain areas and then really hit you if you get stretched, you know, their ability to play between the lines and and and, and vertically is there. So we cover a lot of those scenarios. And, you know, I think it's also important for us that with the ball, we need to be patient and also be, you know, good with the ball, whether it's that transition moments when it's not on to our ability to uh, have good spells in possession where we can move them and 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 and, and create opportunities where we can, you know, also play through their lines. Uh, what's what's been keys to turning things around here, turning the tide here over the course of the last five or six weeks? And um, you know, can you identify one or two things? And and what's the confidence level of this group now compared to what it had been? Yeah, I think it's just we just focused a lot more on you know trying to uh, on the strengths of the team, uh, trying to give the team confidence, try to give them really good uh, structure and organization defensively, uh, and then obviously with the ball just. Uh, some clear ideas, you know, I think also uh, the part with the ball, I think you can get them from A to B from uh, then from moments from B to C, you know, you have quality and I think quality needs to take over in certain moments where you need players who make some special plays. And I think it's just giving the guys more confidence. And I think when you do get results, I think the confidence grows. 
uh, and, and then things just happen to go your way. I think there's an appetite also when things go well to push things. You know, you need to keep working and believing and stay grounded. I think that's been the focus. And the response has been great uh, from the group. You know, again, guys healthy. You know, I think that's also a big part of it. I think there's more competition uh, uh, with, 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 uh, in every spot. And I think that's also important because it get, keeps everyone on their toes. So a combination, I can't just put a finger on one thing. I think we've always believed that we have the quality here to be a team that's in, that can make the playoffs. Uh, and I think that's been very important. That's been the focus. Uh, and, you know, uh, and even with this wins, I think it's important not to, to celebrate them, but not to get away what the, 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 the end goal is and how to reach that. And I think that's been a reminder every day. You, you mentioned uh, anticipating a big crowd tomorrow night. Uh, yeah. How do your guys feed off of that? Do they feed feed off that intensity a little bit more? Yeah, it's always great, you know, to, to uh, you know, playing in, in stadiums. I mean, this one will be packed tomorrow, 21,000 here. But, you know, you have some players that are big-time players that are played in, you know, in always 80,000 uh, in every game, you know, guys like Shakiri. So, when I tell him it's going to be a big crowd, he said to me, come on, Frank, 20,000, you know, is that big? Mm -hmm. So, you know, but, but it's also, look, I think it's, 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 it's great when you come here. I mean, the, the, you see the stadium, I mean, the fans right on top of you. Uh, there is the, the energy is, 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 it's great. Just same as Soldier Field, you know, that's, that's a great stadium for us. And then, you know, if you ask me, I mean, that's, that's an incredible place. Cause if you get 21,000 there, it seems like it's 40. And uh, so, it does bring the best of players, I think, the, from both sides, you know, and uh, I think it's exciting, you know, no one wants to come and play in empty seats, you know, we've been through the uh, the COVID era and it was it was a disaster for uh, for everyone around. So it's great that, you know, knowing that tomorrow will be a great atmosphere, even though it might seem like we're playing uh, an away match. I think it's great because I think those fans that do come out, I think when they don't represent their team, I know they're fire fans. So this is also an opportunity for us to win them over and let them also to showcase the growth of our league. And Frank, if I may ask, it's been a very exciting week for Chicago soccer as a whole. I know that a lot of the team was out at the match last night at Soldier Field. Yeah. The hype around tomorrow's match is palpable from soccer fans and not soccer fans alike. I'm curious how you're feeling about you know, the growth of this game from all around the world, really, but within our city. I mean, it's, it's it, yeah, I mean, it's incredible. We can just talk about the growth of the league. You know, when, you know, I came in into the league and in 96, it was disappointing for me because we didn't have a team here in Chicago and uh, I played in Kansas City, which I loved for two years, but it was great to come back and 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 uh, and finish my career here in Chicago. It started back with the Sting. But if you look where the league was then and where it is now, it's been incredible, the growth. I mean, I, 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 I can't believe it. And uh, you see the stadiums, you see the training facilities. But also when you look around the quality of players that are here, I'm not talking about the international players. I'm talking about the American players and how, uh, you know, they, you know how much better and how much this league has helped the growth uh, uh, of the quality of players and the, their development. And, uh, you know, you don't have to look that far. You look within our team. You look at guys like uh, homegrown guys like Mari Pineda, Brian Gutierrez, that really is a guy that for me, you know, he needs to continue to grow, but he's a guy that I feel that can go and, 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 and compete in the European leagues. And then also the ability when you look, you know, even in Miami, and then and you look at the guys that they have, and you, you talk about one of, you know, depending who you talk to, got, you know, one of the greatest players ever to play is playing in our league, a guy that had options. So, and, and so that's, that's been amazing. I know that, you know, all around the world that everyone is looking in our league, uh, I think it's going to continue to grow. You know, you have, uh, it's, it all starts from 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 the owners and the investors, you know, look at our owner and the commitment he's made. And you, you see the same with, 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 with honored owners. So I think it's like this, it's on an upward climb. We need to be patient. Sometimes we're not. I know I'm not always uh, patient. Our owner is, but it's just incredible to see where we have come in a really short time. And then I think the future is ours. We just need to be patient. Frank, uh, in 2013, there was a friendly game between America and Chicago Fire. I think most of the players that were teenagers when that game was probably assist to the yeah. big game. But, um, but I want to ask remember. You, if I ask Gutierrez, he probably doesn't even know, you know, or some of the younger guys. I want to ask you, how's the injury report for tomorrow? I know you're going to put your best team tomorrow, but how are you looking at it? No, I mean, I think also, look, when you play in a tournament format, you're always 
uh, you, you need to always adjust a couple, you know, situations depending how guys have recovered. The good things for us is everybody, most of the guys, uh, I would say, healthy. You know, there's a couple question marks from the last game with Brian Gutierrez. I think Iro Torres should be okay. Federico Navarro, I didn't want to risk him the last game, but he should be available. So I, I think we need to 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 make some some changes to fr freshen up the team. You know, I'm looking at this game, but also, like I said, I think you know if 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 we don't advance and this is the the last game before we play uh, the next competitive match against Orlando, I'm always looking also at matchup. The last game I played Carlos with Mari. You know, I want to give them you know some games together. You know, uh, uh, leading up to that Orlando match, I think that's important because Rafa Chizos has cards and he won't be able to play. The good thing is, I think with this time is that we've gotten everyone healthy. I hope we come out of the game tomorrow uh, with no setbacks. I think that will be very important. But uh, everyone uh, right now, other than Chris Mueller, I would say is, uh, I'm not missing anyone, is ready to, uh, uh, should be ready to go. I know Kai Kamara had texted us. He had some, some issues with, uh, he wasn't feeling great. So he's been away. Uh, and he might be the only other guy that uh, is not available. You know, uh, so other than that, everybody's good. We have time for about two more questions. Let's go to Zoom real quick. Uh, John Lupo, John. John, can you hear us? Let's try one more time. There we go. I got it. Uh, Frank, when you look at the last match that Club America played against Columbus. Obviously, that was an incredibly impressive victory for Columbus and for MLS as a whole, but they played well, Club America, at the beginning of the match, and then Columbus really started to dominate. What do you think turned that match around, and do you think there are things that Columbus did that you guys can take advantage of? Were there certain things that you noticed? Yeah, I just think they were really good in transition moments. When I think the goals that they scored were late in the match. Uh, America uh, played very well, but I think when you get your opportunities in transition, what Columbus did really well is they punished them. You know, they put the ball in the back of the net, and I think that's going to be the key uh, for us also. I think when you look at our, our last match, I think expected goals, we created a lot of opportunities. We were not able to finish. When you play quality, quality teams like this, I think the moments and the opportunities you get, you got to make them pay, and I think, uh, you know, they had their stretches where they were really good in possession. Uh, I believe America... They, they got on top of them, but then I think late in the match, you know, moments in transition where Columbus uh, made them uh, pay. So um, there'll be no difference uh, with us in tomorrow's match. I think there'll be spells where they have a lot of possession. We need to be patient and not get frustrated. And then we need to stay organized and compact as a team. Because uh, they, like I said, they like to pull you out and then really play between the lines. We look to play vertical uh, balls that we need to be ready for. Uh, but then we do get our chances in, in, in transition moments or in our buildup and, and we get close to goal, we got to be able to put the ball in the back of the net. Anything else from here in the conference room? We're all set then. Thank you very much. Good luck okay, tomorrow, guys. Coach. Thank we'll you see you tomorrow much. evening. Be well. Stay tuned. We have Jairo Torres uh, coming from the Chicago Fire. Player conference with Jairo Torres uh, from the Chicago Fire ahead of tomorrow's League Cup 2023 match uh, against Club America. And this press conference will be conducted in Spanish. Of course, feel free to ask questions in English. We'll translate those back to Spanish. But if you need interpretation on the Zoom, it is available at the bottom of the screen by clicking the interpretation button. Bienvenido, Jairo Torres, jugador de Chicago Fire, antes del partido de mañana de League Cup 2023 contra. Club América de México, Jairo, bienvenido. Eh, Muchas gracias. Eh, para comenzar eh, su panorama sobre el partido de mañana, por favor, okay. ¿cómo lo ves? Eh, pues un partido bastante fuerte, ¿no? Bastante competitivo. Eh, sabemos de la calidad de los jugadores de América, sabemos lo que, lo que representa el México. 
eh, pero igual nosotros, ¿no? Nosotros estamos aquí en, en nuestra casa y tenemos que hacer valer eso. Muy bien. Buenas tardes, Jairo. El lunes, Frank dijo que el partido... Did he freeze? Because I, I don't hear anything. Perdón, que aquí se ha perdido el Zoom. No sé, por mientras, is there another question here in the hall for the meantime? Eh, como quiera. Sí, Jairo, ¿cómo estás? Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Eh, al terminar el partido con Puebla, le preguntamos a Shakiri y dijo que él lo conocía muy bien y que miraba los partidos de la América. So, quería saber un poco de, uh, en el locker room, con tus amigos, con Alonso, con Mauri, eh, ¿qué es lo que se comenta? ¿Qué es lo que se habla de este partido? Eh, pues se comentan bastantes cosas, ¿no? Yo, por ejemplo, que conozco a la mayoría, si no es que a todos los jugadores de ahí, eh, cómo juegan, qué movimientos hacen, eh, trato de darles consejos, trato de, de ayudarlos con, con cosas de que, no sé, que hace Quiñones o hace Kevin o este tipo de cosas, trato de, de aconsejarlos, ¿no? Porque pues si yo juego contra ellos o con ellos y creo que pues les puedo ayudar a mis compañeros y, y pues igual, ¿no? Se, se habla de que pues, un, es un rival bastante complicado, este pero salí adelante. Eh, go ahead. Hola, Jairo. Hola. Uh, ¿Cómo te sientes uh, jugando en el estadio lleno de seguidores del uh, Club América? Eh, como te digo, no es un poco incómodo porque pues, estamos en nuestra casa y que te lo llene otra, otra gente, este, pues no se siente tan de la mejor manera, ¿no? pero tomarlo de, de la mejor manera también porque es un partido importante para nosotros y, y darle la alegría a nosotros, a nuestra familia y pues a la afición que venga en apoyar a Chicago. Muy bien, tenemos una serie de preguntas en línea. We have several questions online, so let's, vamos directamente al Zoom. Eh, comenzamos con Raúl Delgado. Raúl, eh, puede hacer su pregunta si nos escucha. Jairo, ¿cómo te va? Buenas tardes. Hola, buenas tardes. Oye, Jairo, este, hablabas de, de que el conocimiento de los jugadores y eso me imagino que pues, obviamente les, les ayuda un poquito más, ¿no? Pero existe ese, ese reto de saber de, de que a lo mejor en, en el estadio habrá más afición del América, pero, pero pues o sea, también aquí está el fire y, y, y con todas las ganas de querer avanzar, ¿no? Sí, claro. Este, sabemos que como te digo, va a ser un, un partido bastante complicado por, por lo que representa el club contra el que vamos, pero, pero nosotros sabemos de nuestras capacidades, sabemos que, que estamos en nuestro estadio y tenemos que hacer, hacer pesar nuestra casa, ¿no? Sin, sin bien más, como dices, a lo mejor puede haber más afición de, de América, pero nosotros jugar por la gente que viene de nosotros y, y por nosotros mismos, ¿no? Para, para sacar un buen resultado aquí. Podemos seguir con Liz Jiménez. Liz, por favor, adelante. Hola, ¿me escuchan? Hola, sí. Bien. ¿Qué tal, Jairo? Saludos. Liz Jiménez de la Ley 107.9. Preguntarte sobre este momento que viven. Definitivamente esta temporada con el FIRE ha sido como, como dos diferentes. El inicio, obviamente, no fue quizás el mejor. Hubo un cambio de dirección. Llegó Frank Coplas y, y empezaron a dar los, los resultados. Tú obviamente también recuperándote de esa lesión. Y hemos visto ya un equipo, pues quizás con más confianza, lo comentó hace un rato el coach. Háblanos de este momento. ¿Qué tanto para ustedes este torneo puede significar 
como ese envión anímico fuerte para cerrar la temporada y lograr el objetivo primordial que obvio para ustedes es llegar a los playoffs. Sí, sabemos que fueron partes muy diferentes. El inicio fue un bastante, bastante negativo. Este, creo que ahora encontramos ese, esa confianza, ese, esos resultados que no se nos estaban dando, si bien jugábamos bien, eh, pero no se nos daban los resultados. Y ahora creo que nos está acompañando eso con la confianza, con, con la motivación de ganar partido tras partido. Eh, y este torneo yo creo que es un, un buen parámetro para nosotros, para saber cómo estamos pues, contra otra liga que, es, que no es la de nosotros. Eh, y pues también, ¿no? También nosotros queremos hacer un buen papel, poder, poder sobresalir en esta liga y, y poder llegar a la final, que ese es el objetivo que, que tenemos todos, ¿no? Gracias. Seguimos con Jorge Trujillo. Jorge. Hola, bueno, buenas tardes, Jairo. ¿Cómo estás? Buenas eh, tardes. Rápido, do, dos en una, no dos preguntas. Eh, Jairo, ayer eh, los equipos mexicanos que participaron ayer quedaron eliminados. Juárez se lleva la peor, la peor goleada del torneo. Eh, no sé si esa es una pregunta, si esto crea eh, confianza en ustedes que puedan pasar sobre, sobre la América. Pero la otra, eh, pues tú también conociendo de, de sobra lo que es el América, lo que, lo que significa enfrentar a la América. Y eh, pues tu entrenador eh, en, la, en la conferencia después del partido contra Puebla, pues decía que iba a ser como estar en el estadio Azteca. Eh, no sé cómo interpretar eso. Ustedes, ¿qué les ha, qué ha platicado con ustedes, eh, eh, Clopas, acerca de esto? Él también nos dijo que tuvo una mala experiencia cuando dirigió antes allá con, Coron con Toronto y estando en el Azteca también. ¿Cómo toman ustedes esta, esta dos eh, eh, pues cosas que, están, que se están viviendo ahorita en el momento? Eh, contestando tu primera pregunta, yo creo que que no nos da ni más ni menos que, que Juárez haya perdido o los equipos de la Liga MX, ¿no? Creo que este, este es nuestro juego, es totalmente diferente. Eh, es un gran club contra el que vamos. Eh, bastante difícil, sabemos lo que representa jugar contra, contra América. Este, y la, la otra, pues sabemos, ¿no? Sabemos que... Si bien después del partido contra Puebla también nos dijo a nosotros el Frank, nos dijo que iba a haber sold out, pero de más de afición del América podría ser. Y, y pues la verdad, bien, ¿no? Tomarlo como un reto, como un reto de, de poder ganar aquí en, en nuestro estadio este, y en nuestra ciudad, ¿no? También para que, para que se haga respetar Chicago, se haga respetar eh, nuestro estadio y, y pues todo lo que nos, nos rodea. Y la última pregunta, last question for John Gupo. Cairo, just to follow up on what you just said about getting some respect for Chicago. Obviously, in these knockout comp, now that you're in the knockout phase of this tournament, there's always a great excitement, great energy for something like this. Do you feel like playing Club America, one of the premier teams, one of the most well-known teams in Liga MX? Do you feel like that this is not only an opportunity for Chicago, but it's also an opportunity to continue to further the narrative that MLS is closing the gap on Liga MX and also to put to show just what the Chicago Fire are all about? Go ahead. Eh, sabemos que, que es un gran rival, ¿no? Y eso creo que, que nos motiva un poco más. ¿Por qué? Porque sabemos que si bien es de los grandes de México, este, tenemos la oportunidad nosotros de jugar en una estancia final contra, contra un club así. Y, y creo que es una motivación extra, bueno, en lo personal, poder sacar un buen resultado contra ese equipo te da como, como ese parámetro para para saber que estás a nivel de, de otras ligas, ¿no? 
para que... Ah, ok. Se ah, produce ahí en la... Eh, para que sepas que estás al nivel de otras ligas y, y pues, pues eso, ¿no? ¿Y qué, qué fue el otro comentario? Si puedo just repeat it quickly, what I was saying is to just also give this an opportunity with a good performance and a victory to just further show not just the U.S. audience, but a broader audience of just what the Chicago Fire are all about and what kind of football that Chicago can play. Claro, eh, lo tomamos también como, como un reto, como un reto para poder hacer sentir que aquí está Chicago, que, que vamos, vamos en, para arriba, porque en la liga creo que hemos demostrado que, que hemos tenido resultados positivos y creo que, creo que podemos dar ese, ese golpe de autoridad eh, ganando el América, ¿no? porque como te digo, es un gran club, es de los grandes de México y, y creo que que eh, ganándole América sería un golpe en la mesa para, para el favor de Chicago Fire. Bueno, muchas gracias, Jairo. Muchas gracias. gracias a todos. Tenemos la conferencia gracias. de prensa de Club América hoy en la tarde. Estén pendientes, por favor. Club America will have their press conference this afternoon.